Adobe InDesign is the perfect tool to create a trifold brochure, and in this video, I'll show you how. Follow along in this free class and learn how to create a custom trifold brochure from start to finish, all using Adobe InDesign. I'll also show you how to upload the brochure to Simple Booklet, a web-based PDF to Flipbook platform that allows you to transform marketing and communication documents into engaging digital content. So let's jump right into this video and start creating. I've gone ahead and created a new document for this trifold brochure, and I'm just gonna go over the document setup quickly. In the width field, it's set to 261 pixels. The height is 612 pixels. I've set this document to six pages. It has a portrait orientation and the margins they're set at 27 pixels all the way around. I'm gonna click on the pages panel and you can see that I have six pages in this document, but I want them to be spread. So I want one, two, and three to be a spread and then four, five, and six, just like you would see in a traditional trifold brochure. Now, before I can start dragging these pages next to one another, I have to go up to the pages panel and click the options icon here, this hamburger icon, and then I guess you would deselect this. Right now you can see that check mark, allow document pages to shuffle. Go ahead and check that or uncheck it because the check mark is now gone. Once you see that that check mark is gone, you can start dragging the pages together. So there's one and two. I'm gonna drag three there. I'll drag four next to five, and then six next to five. Good, so now I have those two spreads that I was speaking of one through three and four through six. Now that the page structure is just the way we want it, let's focus on designing the trifold brochure. Next, I wanna add the background color to the pages in this trifold brochure. Now the best practice to do this is double clicking the A parent and adding your background color to the parent page. And to do this, I'm gonna click on the rectangle frame tool. The rectangle tool would work as well and just click drag and cover the entire page with the frame and add the fill color. And I'm gonna choose this dark green. And you can see once I apply that dark green, it applies it throughout all the pages in the brochure. I'm just gonna double click to get out of the parent page. Now you could create another parent page with another fill color of your choice. However, if you want some of the pages just to be white, you could just drag the none page here. Do you see that? It's the same size. So in this case, I want the far left page to be white in the first spread, and I want the center page in the second spread to be white as well. Next, we can focus on adding content from the CC Libraries panel to design the front cover and back page in the brochure. Next, I'm gonna click on the CC Libraries panel here, and in here, I have a library with all of the assets I'll need for the trifold brochure. Now I have a shape here and I'm gonna focus my attention on designing the cover page as well as the back cover. And you can see that those are the pages here that you see the far right is the cover and this middle page is the back cover. So I'm gonna click on this and just drag and I'm just gonna drop it because it's already the size that I want and then I'm gonna position it where I'd like. That looks good there. And I also have an image of a city and I'm gonna drop it right into this shape. So just hover over that shape and drop it in. I'm gonna click the donut or the content grabber, go to my properties panel, and under the opacity, I'm gonna give it a blend mode of multiply. So we have a nice blend into that green. Now I do wanna add kind of a white shape border to this. There's a couple ways of doing this. I could just click on the, the actual shape and give it a white stroke. But the problem with that, it's also giving it a stroke on the outer edges. So what I like to do is if I just go back, back, I'm gonna click this again, Command C to copy, and then do Shift Option Command V to paste in place. Just creates another copy. I'm going to hit my down arrow key maybe once. I'm gonna delete the picture within. I'm gonna send this backward. Actually send it to the back. You could do that by going up to Object, Arrange, Send to Back, and just make that fill color white. So we have kind of that white border. Now, if you think that's too much border, just go back, maybe go up a little bit, just like that. Perfect, so I have the cover page already set, 
and you can see that that shape flows into the back cover. I'm going to make my way back up to the CC Libraries window here. And in the assets that I have, I have a main logo for this fictional company called Astute Wealth. And I'm going to click and drop that in and place it somewhere in the upper left hand corner of the cover page. And so this is a fictional company called Astute Wealth for wealth management, financial planning, and I like the position there. I also have a Google document, which I'll share the link to with all the text for this trifold brochure, and I've broken it down by page. So here's the cover title and the secondary title. So I'm going to select invest in your future and just copy. Let's go back to InDesign and paste that in position the text frame how you want. And I've already gone ahead and added the styles for all the titles and all the body copy. If you go to the properties panel in this template and you'll see them all here. So we want cover title. And so there it is, invest in your own future. And I also want to highlight the word own and add some emphasis to that. I'm gonna go to my swatches panel and add that pinkish color. Now this text, there's a bit of space at the very top. I'm using this text is called Canela Deck. To get around that, what I do is hold my option key and double click the text frame to go into the text frame options. And then I go into uh, baseline options and I set the offset to cap height. And if I hit my preview, do you see how the text flows to the top there? It adjusts to the top, it's just easier. So I'm gonna click okay and then adjust my frame. Some fonts um, need to have that adjustment made and that's how you would do it. Let's go back to the Google Doc. And here is the secondary title, Command C or Control C on Windows. Command V to paste that in and I'm, this is gonna go right underneath. And again, I'm gonna highlight this or select it and this will be cover subheader. And I'm just gonna adjust that frame and then adjust the text accordingly. Now I have some graphic elements. If I go back to the CC libraries, I have this cool shape here. So I can bring that and just drop that in. Actually, what I'll do is I'll drag it to make it the size I want. And then just play with the opacity. If I go to properties, that might be too intense. I'm gonna dim it down to maybe 35 or let's do 25%, something like that. Good, and I can add I'll just do another copy of this and I can add the website for this fictional company here. Let's call it astutewealth.com. I didn't create a, par a paragraph style for this, but I'll just shrink it down by shift command and left square bracket. Something like 10 point is fine. And this could be a little further down the page. It could be centered or flush left like I have it there. Let's pause designing the first spread and focus our attention on the inside pages next. This is arguably the most important part of the brochure as it will contain meaningful information for viewers. Let's take a closer look. Let's keep going by adding the content to the left side page first. I'm gonna hop back to my Google Doc and under the page two header in the Google Doc, I'm just going to select this paragraph and title, A Brief History of Astute Wealth, Command C, Go back to our document here, command V or control V to paste that in. I'm going to position this at the very top and there is no formatting applied yet. And that's good. I'm going to place my cursor in the title, go to your paragraph styles, and this will be uh, inside title rows. And I'm just going to bring this paragraph up one and this entire paragraph. I'm just going to go to this paragraph style window here. And this will be body copy with line white, okay? And the with line part is, it just adds this paragraph rule at the very bottom, just as a separator. Go back to the Google Docs. See, I'm just kind of going back and forth for this. I'm gonna select meet the team, go back to my InDesign, paste that in, position it somewhere like that. And for this, I'm gonna select that, and this will be small title white, good. I'm just going to stretch that out like so, and maybe move it up a bit. That looks good. I might have to move it up a bit more. Good. I'm gonna bring in the headshots next. And for this, I'll go back to my CC libraries. And here they are here, profile one through four. So I'll click profile one, hold my shift key and click profile four. I'll just drag them onto my 
page here and click, 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 click. Good. So for this, I'm going to position the first one here. And then I have profile two next to there. Profile three underneath the first one. And we'll complete this by placing this one here and just leave enough spacing. I'm going to maybe do move these over to the right once each and then select all of them and reposition them so they're centered to the page. I just, I wanna leave enough space for the text as well. So I'm gonna move these down a bit. And before I do that, I also wanna bring in this graphic element here and I'm going to just drop it in like so and send it to the back. And what I like to do is center it to the first one here and then I'll do up, up, left, left. I'll make another copy and I'll center it to this one here like so. And then I'll do down, down, right, right, just to offset those two. Same thing here. Uh, let's do up, up, left, left. And the same thing here, just to remain consistent, down, down, right, right. So you get a cool setup like that. And what I'll do is just dim those down just a bit because they are a little dark. I'm gonna go to my properties panel and change the opacity to maybe 30% is fine. We just want a subtle graphic element to go with those headshots. So next I'm gonna hop back to my Google Doc and here are the fictional names. I'm just gonna select all of them here, copy and paste them so I have them all in the document. And now I'm going to format them. So I'm gonna place my cursor in the name and we have profile name here. Let me move it to the green part so we could see what we're doing here. I'll move it there and place your cursor in the secondary title and this is profile title. Same thing here, profile name, profile title, profile name, profile title, and then profile name, and one more time, profile title. And so I, I want these to each be on their own, so Command X to cut that. And I'm gonna bring it back over here, Command V, and I wanna place this right underneath the first headshot and position it like so. Now I wanna center this to that and we'll do that like so. And then I want to drag this over and let's create two more copies like that, maybe up a bit. Yep, and now I can just go in and copy Henry, cut that, paste it in here, cut Alexa Pat Peterson and paste it here. And we have one more. This one, Victor Vanison, all made up names, of course, and paste it there. Good, so we have that set as well. And we might wanna bring all this stuff up just a bit, or even better, let's space these elements out a bit as well. You can also bring the title down. This is where you're gonna have to kind of massage it and look at things and see what fits and what doesn't. But there, we just kind of did our second slide here or second page of this trifold brochure. Now we're gonna focus our attention on the second and then the third. So something to do that's pretty simple, if I put my uh, guides on, is just create another copy of this and then another copy over here. And what I like to do is just go in, and since I already have the, the sizes that I want, I'm gonna go back to my paragraph styles and this will be inside title and this text, the body text, will be body copy with line. And now I can go back to my Google Doc. Let's scroll down and I'm gonna copy the text first, paste that in, go back and let's get that title, build a portfolio with expert advice and just paste that in as well. So that's looking good and it's fitting good. I'm gonna just put this back and now I have some infographics that I wanna bring in. And again, I can get these from the CC library that I've built. You could see them down below, or I have one here and I'll just duplicate it. Let me just drop that in and I'll place it somewhere like so. And what I'll do is I'll just bring that up so it's closer to the text up here. And I'm gonna jump back to my Google Doc. Let me scroll down, I have the figures that I need. So I'm just going to copy all that 
and let's bring it over so we have it close by. And again, so I want these two first, 78 and then 46, I'm gonna X, and then let me just paste that in a, its own separate frame. And then I can go ahead and style these. So I'm gonna go to my paragraph styles again. Let's open that up. And so this is figure text, and then this is infographic text. Down below, same thing, figure text, and then infographic text, okay? And so I wanna line this up and draw a couple hairlines using the line tool to point to the parts of this pie chart that represent the number. So let me zoom in for this, and I'm gonna grab my line tool. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna drag something like this, go to my properties panel, and I'll make the stroke of this maybe 0.25 and the stroke will be, yeah, let's see how that looks with the dark green. Let's have a look here. Yeah, that looks good. And then what I'll do is just make another copy and line it up with the 46 and adjust your line to go something like that, okay? And so we have that. And what I wanna do here next is just kind of flip flop them. So what I'll do is just select this and create another copy but I want the pie chart to be on the far right. And I want the, the text here to be on the far left. So you can do that. Good. And why don't we just go ahead and maybe do a flush right with this. So shift command R to adjust that. You can also use your alignment tools up top for your text alignments. And again, I'm just going to adjust this a bit. Something like that is fine. And same thing here. Something like that is good as well. And I will point this. Actually, I'll, what I'll do is I'll rotate this. Just so it looks different from the top pie graph, pie chart. And same thing. The lines don't have to match um, the same as up top. Just something like that is fine, just to represent the figures to go with the actual pie chart. Now let me get those other, so this is 82. And of course, I'm not changing anything in the pie chart. It's, it's just the same thing. I just wanna show you how to create something like this. Actually, I'll just copy this, cut, let's paste it in here. And then I'll match the styles here by using my eyedropper tool. And here's another way of matching style. So I'm going to click this, click the, uh, the 78% style, and then just hover over this one and do that. And I'll do the same by clicking this here and we'll match that style. Maybe I'll just click here, the 48% and I will go to my paragraph styles and make this figure text and the clients gained in 2023. That will be infographic. And what I'll do is write, flush write this like so. Good, so that's exactly what I wanted. And let's have a look now. If I go to my pages panel and double click to get an overview, that's starting to look really good. I'm gonna click this to delete. So we have the far left page as well as the middle page. Let's keep going now with the bottom portion of the middle page. Let's jump back to the Google Doc and move our way down. And so the next title will be Nowhere to Begin. I'm gonna copy that and paste it here, double click. Let's bring it down right below our infographics. Click the title, let's go to the paragraph styles, and this will be small title. So you can click that, we'll have to make that fit. So double click and then extend the frame to the margin and move it up a bit, it's fine. So underneath here, we're gonna add some icons and I'm gonna go to my CC libraries for this again. So let's bring them over. I have one, uh, two, three, and there should be one more. If I scroll down, there it is, the scale, and I'm just gonna bring them over. Click, 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 click. And so I'll put the magnifying glass first, followed by the scale, followed by the coins, and then the chart, the bar chart icon. I'm gonna select all of them, and let's go to our fitting options up top, or alignment. You can find that here in the dock here as well. So I want to distribute the horizontal centers. Oh, I wanna make sure that I have it set to selection. 
uh, horizontal centers, and then let's just make sure that they are centered and they are. So the distribution of space is equal. Now we're gonna add the text underneath. I'm gonna go back to the Google Doc. Here they are, find an advisor. There's four of them to match the icons. Paste that in, good. I'm going to stylize these, so select them. Let's go to the paragraph styles. And this is called icon text. Zoom in for this. And what I wanna do, again, I just want to select the first one, copy, and let's paste. And I want to place this right under here. Actually, I want it to go over two lines. Okay, and place it like so. And then what I do is I just, again, it's easier to make the copies and then just go ahead and paste the other ones in. So minimize, command V, delete that one, command X, command V, command X, and command V. Good, so I can delete this. And let's go back to our pages panel and click, double click to see the overview, good. So page two in the center spread is looking good as well. And then I'm just gonna kind of space these out accordingly just to get some good balance there in terms of uh, spacing things out. So now we can look at the last page in the inside spread and we'll have this space here to add some testimonial quotes from some of the clients that this company has served. So again, let's go to our Google Doc, page four. First, I have to replace the top text. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to select that text and just replace it. Same thing with the title, do it yourself, stock trading. And let's go back to our Google Doc and we have what our clients say. Command C to copy, Command V to paste. And let's place it right underneath and align it like so. Good. So what our clients say will be the same title it's just called small title white, okay? And then this text here, I think I have also, yes, it's called quote text. Let me just move this off a bit. So let's select the text first, bring it up. I'm gonna select the text and this will be quote text. I'm gonna select the name or place my cursor there, quote attribution, okay? Good. And we'll do the same thing here. I'm gonna select the quote, go to my paragraph styles, quote text, put your cursor in the name, and this is quote attribution. Now I don't want that space in between, so I'll just delete it. Let me zoom in here, make it a little bit easier. Same thing, select the text, paragraph styles, and this is quote text. And I'm going to place my cursor in the name and this is quote attribution. So let's try this with a full return for all three and see how that looks. Yeah, that looks good. Give it a little bit of space there. That is looking pretty good. And I, I also want to add just kind of like a quote here, quote symbol. I'm going to select the type tool and on my pasteboard, just do a quotation mark and I'm going to do command A. And I'm gonna make this uh, maybe, let's see, Benton Sands. And let's choose something like black is good. I find that looks good for quotations. And I'm really gonna bump this up quite a bit. And then what I wanna do is create this into outlines. And to do that quickly is Shift Command O. And now this is a symbol. It's a vector shape and it's not, it's a compound path, I should say. It's not um, editable text anymore. And what I wanna make this is white, Oop, not the stroke, the fill white, send it to the back. And let's see if we can blend this into the background, maybe multiply, no, that's not good, overlay. And I'm gonna to just tone that down a bit, something like that, 25% is good. And then I'm just gonna maybe scale it up, scale it up a bit. So I'm just holding shift command and dragging that up. Just another nice element to go with our trifold brochure design here. Awesome work. Now that we've completed the inside spread of the brochure, we can move back to the last two panels before exporting the work and then uploading it as a flipbook presentation. 
Before I go back to my Google Doc, I want to create another copy of this title with the text and I'm gonna bring it back to the very top of the left side page and I'll jump back to my Google Doc and I want to select the text and let's replace that first. Right there, we can just select that and paste that in. This is a little bit longer, which is fine. And let's replace the title, go back to your Google Doc, which this will be available to you. You can get all this text and copy uh, right here in this Google Doc, which I'll share with you. Uh, consider crypto, so let me just replace that. Consider crypto to build your wealth, good. And so I have another text piece in my Google Doc, the last one here. I'm just gonna select that, copy, paste that. And I am going to select this text and go back to my paragraph styles. And this is body copy with line. Actually, I don't want the line in this case. So here's a little trick on how to get rid of that. If I just place my cursor at the very last line in this paragraph and do option command J, that will bring up your paragraph rules. And from here, I can go to rule below and turn it off. If I hit my preview, you can see that that is gone. Good. I'm just going to double click to bring that up. Let's get rid of those extra paragraph breaks and make the text frame fit. I'm also gonna go back down here and let's create this. I'm gonna copy that. That's just an easy way of doing this. This way you don't have to recreate the, the text. I might bring that up a bit, something like that. And I'm gonna go back to my Google Doc and get this last piece here, portfolio review, and we could paste that in as well. And as a last step on this page, this panel I should call it, I'm gonna to go to my CC libraries. I have another chart here. There it is, bar graph. If I just click to drop it in, yeah, that looks good. Maybe do something like that. I can also increase it in size so it's margin to margin. How does that look? Oh, that might be too big. I might just, maybe just a bit and then space everything out accordingly. Something like that looks good. White space is always good. A little breathing room is good as well. So that is essentially done as well. Now on this final page, I have some social media icons in my library at the very bottom. And I'm just gonna bring those in next. Doesn't matter what the order is, we're just bringing them in like so. You can just click, 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 click. And if I zoom in here, we could do maybe Instagram and then LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter and space them out a bit. Again, let's select them, go to my alignment, and let's distribute the horizontal centers to get equal spacing, bring them down just a bit. I'm gonna use this header, I'm just gonna copy it from the previous page, and I'm gonna change this to small title white. And let's just call or rename this, connect with us. We can center it as well, that's fine. And under this, I want to add a QR code for anyone that may want to scan to maybe go to astutewealth.com. To add or create a new QR code, I can go up to object and then generate QR code. You could do this right in Adobe InDesign, which is really cool. So the type, what type do I want? Obviously I want this to be a web hyperlink so when people scan it with their phones, it'll take them to a web hyperlink. Now, of course, this is a fictional company, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.astutewealth.com. And then I'm gonna click on color and it retains all the swatches for my swatches panel. And I want this to be the dark green and I'll click okay. There it is in my loaded cursor. I'm gonna click and drop it. Actually, let me just drag it. And what I wanna do is go to my swatches panel and give this a white fill so we can see the actual QR code. Now that may be too big, so I'm just gonna scale it down, shift command and scale it down. And then I'm gonna bring it down like so, something like that. And then I have this logo from the front cover, which I'm gonna just bring in 
and repeat the logo down below like so. The design is complete and next, it's time to export the brochure as a PDF so we can upload it to the Simple Booklet platform. To export the trifold brochure as a PDF, let's make our way up to File and then choose Export. From the Format dropdown, let's choose Adobe PDF Interactive since this will be viewed on a screen. And then go ahead and save. Now here's the important part. We will be exporting all the pages and we wanna export as spreads. This way, when we upload the document to Simple Booklet, the platform will recognize the spreads and divide the panels accordingly. Everything else is fine, so let's just click Export. If you haven't done so yet, visit simplebooklet.com, a digital flipbook platform that allows you to upload PDFs to create digital content. Create an account, sign into the Simple Booklet dashboard, and follow the next steps. I'm gonna go ahead and click Select File, and from here, I'll choose Upload from Device. Now I have my PDF here that we saved from InDesign. I'm gonna click that, and then I'll choose Open. It'll take a few seconds to upload, and from here, you'll see a preview of your trifold brochure. And from here, we can also give it a simple booklet title. And I'll just call this Astute Wealth Brochure. This is the cool part. You can choose the type of fold from the selections below. You can have no fold, which we don't want. By fold, we don't want that either. There's our selection, trifold. Once I select that, you can see that simple booklet adds the fold lines here in our trifold brochure. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and click complete. And here is the finished product. I'm gonna click on go to design. That'll take me to the link with our trifold brochure. Let's preview it by clicking the right arrow. There's our first fold, second fold, which opens the trifold brochure completely, flips it over and then folds it to the back page and if we go the other way, it just reverses the same action. So I can fold to see the center spread, fold it in, and then go back to the cover. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this class on how to create a trifold brochure in Adobe InDesign and convert it to a flipbook with Simple Booklet. Interested in learning more about InDesign and flipbooks? Check out these videos right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.